and good morning, Revolution, and welcome to this week. Um, we have a interesting and hopefully thought-provoking uh, show this morning, discussion with uh, Rosanna. Good morning. Good morning, Joe. And Anita, good morning. Good morning, Joe. And Scott, who is glowing because he's so happy about his homeboy <laughs> and his, uh -oh. his place on the ticket. Hey, Scott. <laughs> Yeah, but well, sorry, I was up late last night just hanging out with Joe and, and you know, uh, you know <laughs> got to back the blue no matter who. Um, back the blue no matter who. You riding with Biden. I'm yeah, riding oh, with sure, 100%. I'm, I'm riding. That was with a joke, you. by the way. Please, please don't. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm riding with the working class and the people's front against fascism. Um, but that doesn't, it doesn't rhyme, you know, so <laughs> no. it doesn't rhyme. And uh, uh, we need something that rhymes. Dump Trump rhymes, but Anita, you took it down. Well, you had it, well we couldn't see the whole thing. So I, I didn't want to abbreviate the message. So, you know. I see, I see. Rosanna, how's it going in California? Has the heat died down any? Well, it, it just, uh... Uh, it seems like it's going to die down and then it just comes right back up. So mm. not too much. Well, there's a fire burning in, in uh, Washington, D.C. Oh. And it's a fire, Scott, of oh. indignation about the use of the White House as yes. a prop for Trump's re-election campaign. They say he's violating the hatch act uh, yeah. left and right. Well, he is and, and, and Pompeo as well. Um, uh, it's, you know, they're, they're clearly, you know, using their, their, um, you know, state, uh, government function, um, for a, a political, you know, partisan campaign purpose and using the resources, um, devoted to, and it's, it's, you know, this is one of the times when we see, um, one of those aspects of, of bourgeois democracy, right? Um, you know, the idea that there are limits on what you can do politically uh, uh, based on, you know, what the situation is. And they're just flagrantly violating those. Um, uh, and it's, these things are important. Um, I was just thinking about uh, Dimitrov, um, Yogi Dimitrov and his great uh, sort of speech on the fascist danger and, and how we fight it, where he says, you know, what in the preparatory stages when fascism has not yet come to power, we have to recognize and fight every attempt to um, uh, overthrow or to um, uh, push aside even you know bourgeois democratic liberties and institutions. Um, well, they're certainly trying to do that. Did you watch the convention at all, Rosanna? I mean, I know it's bad on your stomach. Oh but... my God, I. I attempted to a couple of times, but just my stomach just started saying, no, <laughs> not that. So I read, I, I read articles and, you know, I read some of the things like I watched clips, but I couldn't sit through any of that. I was just, with all the lies coming out of it, I, I just, you know, I couldn't understand how they could just sit there and, or stand there and, and just spew it all out like, like if it was truth, I just. Now, Anita, you were glued to it. The Democratic Party convention, I remember <laughs> I, I last was, week. But I did. But like Rosanna, I only consumed this one in a mediated way. So, uh, mm. you know, I didn't want to directly expose myself. But about that Hatch Act, I think it's it's like the whole RNC is like opposite day. They say they're all about law and order while they're breaking the law to, you know, use the White House as a background for their, and they, they say they want to end violence while they're stoking violence. It's just the opposite of what, they say the opposite of what is actually happening or actually doing. So not only a lie, but a lie, you know, 180 degrees. It was uh, despicable. And the other and thing the line uh, today about what's happening in Washington um, is that uh, the Black Lives Matter March on Washington is happening right now. A mm. huge gathering at the Lincoln Memorial. Um, I believe it's called the Get Your Knee Off Our Necks uh, March on Washington. 
Um, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, and that's important because the Republicans are using racism and anti-communism and anti-socialism. It's basically uh, their main platform, Rosanna. They're, they're just um, Biden, the Bernie, the Bernie Biden coalition. They're trying to impose socialism and disorder and what's happening on the streets of Wisconsin and what happened in um, Portland and in coming to your neighborhood. You know, and uh, it's, it's such a uh, vicious attempt uh, to just run a campaign on fear, don't you think? I mean, yeah, I think it's you know, it's their weapon is to try to. It, it's just like racism, you know. You fear each other because of the way you look, and you know, and the color of your skin, and things like that. Not having to do anything with, you know. We're, we're pretty much all the same. No matter what color you are, you could be a thief or you can be the most honest person, the most loyal, dignified person. It doesn't matter, you know? And, and, and but people have this, um, this fear of losing what they have worked so hard for. And Trump really, you know, um, uh, tries to capitalize on that fear. And so they, you know, some people fall for it. They go, oh no, you know, this and that. When the, some of this uprising was happening here, what in the television, what they did is they had people who are, uh, were, um, uh, what do you call it? Mom and pop shops or, you know, family, family businesses. That's who they highlighted. You know, they were destroyed and things like that. So that just, that adds to that fear, you know. Yes, yes, and and stoking that fear. Uh, I don't know if y'all was able to listen to enough of Trump's speech last night. I, I listened to it this morning on my way to uh, work and over breakfast, and I thought uh, that it was a very carefully honed speech, appealing to just what Rosanna is talking about. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know. I provided job, Tennessee Valley Authority. I, I brought them back. Biden voted for NAFTA and the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership. I got rid of it. Mm -hmm. I supported auto worker jobs. I, I'm supporting steel worker jobs. I brought 500,000 manufacturing jobs back, Scott. Um, and um, I'm your guy. I'm, I'm gonna pro provide security for you. And, and this is, you know, this is another classic piece of the, the propaganda that fascist forces use to come to power, right? They, they you know, it's, there, there's no question that the leadership of the Democratic Party has betrayed the working class time and again with, you know, it, it's, it's sort of caving to uh, the, the neoliberal agenda of austerity and privatization with, with NAFTA, with its complicity in union busting. There's a long history of that. Um, that said, the Republican Party is a thousand times worse and has been the driving force of that process. And what Trump is doing is saying, um, you know, trying to point out the, the, the flaws and the complicity of um, the leadership of the Democratic Party and use that to drive or draw workers into, um, you know, into, into his camp. And you know, the, the same thing happened in Germany. Um, you know, uh, Hitler promised, uh, you know, employment, you know, jobs and, and security and, and subsidies for families and help for peasants and, and pointed out that the, you know, the Social Democrats had, had not been able to do anything and yeah, it's really the, the parallels are kind of are kind of chilling, and we say that all the it's time. Kind of chilling, they're very very chilling. How's it playing in in my home state, Anita? Well, mm -hmm. I think um, I think what we would have liked to what Ohio would have liked to have heard uh, from Donald Trump if he wants to make concessions to the working class is that you know he should pass the Pro Act, the Protect the Rights to Organize Act, mm -hmm. and that's something that Republicans have been steadfastly against. Our uh, our congressional delegation, such as it is from Ohio, has voted against it. Um, most of it's Republican. Um, so, uh, so I think 
that kind of real uh, real support for working class issues was completely absent from, from Donald Trump's uh, speech. And, and from what I've heard about the speech, I, I heard it did try to throw everything possible at, at, at Joe Biden and just to see kind of what sticks. But, uh, but I think the anti-communism was especially uh, insidious because uh, you know, that really shows you how the anti whole anti-communism ideology in American political culture has been uh, regressive and 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 you know proto fascist. Uh, it's so linked to, to white supremacy and used by yes. white supremacist forces to um, like organize against um, the the movement for equality. Exactly. But they got nothing. Nothing is sticking so far, you know. And it was a speech kind of. Uh, and a convention kind of narrowly focused at the uh, at the uh, at the uh, base, you know. Uh, a lot of people are criticizing Rosanna the, the violence, the rebellion, and the forms that it's taking. And um, and I hear the point that you were making because, you know, when I was coming up, we had a rebellion, uh, an uprising after Martin Luther King was killed in 1968. They burned down a lot of the stores and shops on the south side where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And don't you know, they never came back. It, it was the beginning. And then that happened in a lot of major towns around the country where the rebellions took place, urban, just, there was looting or liberation or whatever you want to. And of uh, uh, people, you know, they took. But what else do you expect people to do? They, they don't have any other means to fight, you know? And while you don't condone, uh, Rosanna, you don't condone, on the other hand, I hear this song in my head uh, by Everlast, uh, Stone in My Hand, you know? And he's talking about people around the world, in Palestine, South Africa, Detroit, you know, rebelling, and they don't have much to rebel with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we got to do, it seems to me, is find the forms of protest that can provide that kind of outlet so that people can make meaningful change. And that's why, don't you think, I mean, we need to vote, but we also need to do some other things, no? I, th I think, you know, the protest of, you know, like you and I are more or less the same age, uh, and so the protest of, the, of those years is different than the protest of these, of these years, is from what I observed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a call for nonviolence. There is, we have cameras, you know, we're all carrying around a camera, an instant camera that, that has provided evidence that it has, some of this violence has been orchestrated. There's evidence that even the police themselves have destroyed their own vehicles. Uh, to kind of, you know, promote this agitation. You know, it's when you're out there and you're angry, it's easy to be, to, to step it up a notch when everybody's, you know, you, you get, you, you gather that momentum of, yeah, let's go get them kind of a thing. <clears throat> and so, uh, but there's also a, a um, concerted effort to not, to not have violence, to not engage in violence, to not destroy your communities. And, 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 and there's also videotapes of people stopping any attempted violence. Uh, even here in Los Angeles, a reporter caught it on tape where, yes. you know, the community had stopped uh, these people that were, in, you know, all black and just covered up so that you can't tell who they were, who were coming to uh, set something on fire, one of the businesses on fire. And there's yeah. other ones where there's hammers being, you know, so, so I think it's different now in the sense that now those that are provoking it are not the actual writers, but I agree, we have to have a loud voice, we have to have a massive voice. And that's what we need to really promote is that massive voter turnout, that massive vote ma actions on the streets, but with, you know, in a peaceful way so that people, you know, the working people don't like violence. And so that's not going to get their attention. I, I mean, I, I do want right. to draw and, attention. And, uh, go ahead, Scott. Um, 
I do want to draw attention to the fact that, it, you know, there has been, you know, destruction of, of businesses and looting, um, you know, as, as Rosanna mentioned, often initiated, uh, provoked by, um, by the right, by the police. Uh, but, you know, I saw an article um, that said that uh, uh, protesters in Kenosha had um, burned down an office complex for the Department of Corrections. Um, and spray painted, uh, are you listening yet? On the, um, you know, on the, the rubble or one of the walls or whatever that was left. And that's, that to my mind is a, it's, a, it's, it's a different kind of violence than the sort of looting and, and whatever, um, the, the sort of community destruction that we're talking about here. Um, the, the, the question of whether it's, you know, um, strategically, tactically, uh, useful is, is a different one, but but not all the violence associated with the protests is is the same. Um, there are multiple. Well, a lot of that, even some of those things, have been you know engineered by the uh, by the uh, right. But I think that uh, one of the things that we're seeing though um, last week was the use of another form, Scott, of protest, the strike. In the NBA, you know, yeah, um, yay, you yeah, know, and which 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 provoked um, other walkouts and displays of solidarity in baseball, in women's tennis, and this is a this is a big deal. And you know, people sometimes uh, resist the idea that athletes are part of the working class, but they absolutely are. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they sell the um, their their labor power, what they can do with their with their body and their mind. Um, to make enormous profits for the owners of teams, and they were withholding uh, that labor. And this is absolutely, you know, it, this is enormous. It's it's huge. It's it's an escalation to like you were saying, uh, Joe, a different form of um, protest, a different form of contention. And um, I think, I mean, we have systematic racism in our society, and all, all those. Uh, what was discouraging was those days and days of protest and, and, and in, in the streets uh, after the George Floyd murder uh, didn't stop this one cop from, from shooting that, uh, that man in the back. Um, and, and the real violence yeah. that has happened in Kenosha has been the shooting of, of, an, of a man in the back plus the two, um, the, the young man who shot the two protesters uh, to death. Um, so I think the real violence was all caused by the other side, not the protesters in this case. Now, what we have to understand is that is that going running through this is the unemployment crisis mm -hmm. and the benefits are gone. I was out on the street yesterday at Union Square. We were doing a table and we came across so many people who were um, one woman, uh, who was an immigrant from Latin America. She was saying, I was working 40 hours a week. Now I'm only working 10. Mm. Um, how am I going to survive? We met a cat from who parents brought him here from Cuba. And he, my, I have no benefits. How can I pay my rent? What am I going to do? I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know what to do, you know? And, um, that is increasingly happening all over the country, you know, and therefore the, the and who's doing anything about it? You know, I mean, um, yeah, we got eight weeks between now and the election, but even after the election, um, these problems are gonna persist for a while and, and uh, the, the putting, um, that anger to a constructive purpose and finding outlets for it, I think are really, really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. And our party has to play a role in that. That's one thing yeah. I, I know is true about the RNC. There was no talk about the future. And even all the talk about the pandemic was just justifying and lying about what Donald Trump had done so far, but no plans for the future and no, 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 out no no way out of this except maybe uh, have, uh, a, have a have uh, a no plans a vaccine sometime in the future but you know nothing nothing uh no plans right 
Well, the uh, democratic forces have to come up with a plan and um, the plan has to be to uh, continue to once again, that the election takes place to keep the pressure on uh, your homeboy, Scott, <laughs> uh, and your senator, or ex-senator Rosana from the great state of California and everybody who gets elected. And that has to be in an organized uh, a way, I think, for it to be effective. Well, um, Labor Day is, is coming up and um, we have put forward a voter pledge. We're asking everybody to pledge to uh, get out and vote, vote early. Don't vote too often because yeah. you don't want, we don't want anybody cheating. You can't tell them. Uh, and get your neighbors and friends and family and coworkers to uh, do the same. Mm -hmm. that, that's vitally, vitally Im important. Um, and the bigger the vote, the, um, we don't know what's going to happen on November the 4th. I don't think we're going to have an answer, no. Rosanna, to the, um, on November the 4th, 3rd, rather, the election is the 3rd. I don't want nobody to accuse me of you know, giving wrong information. <laughs> it's the 3rd. But Rosanna, on the 4th, we're not going to know who the president is. Well, we can know who the president is if we have a massive voter turnout. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where we leave no doubt mm -hmm. who the people want to elect. And I think that's the message that we need to send to people is that the majority, you know, Trump's base is really small, but they're the ones who go out and vote. Mm -hmm. And so what we need to do is you have to go out to vote because we're bigger. We're, you know, we're, we're a larger population against Trump but we have to take the step to go out to vote. Once we go out to vote in mass, then the, the Republicans, nobody can doubt or try to say, call it fraud or anything like that. So the massive voter turnout is key to making sure that, you know, uh, we have a clear direction on November 4th. Exactly. Quick opinion. lightning round, and then we're gonna have to call it a uh, Friday morning. The danger of fascism after the Democratic uh, uh, Party convention and the Republican Party convention is greater or lesser. I'll start on my left, which is Anita, and move to my right. Scott Rosanna. Yes. Is this the one word lesser? thing? I have to say greater. I'm really, I'm really concerned right now uh, about this, the, the future. And I think we have to, we have to work hard to defeat to defeat Trump and, and his, his uh, minions uh, over the next eight weeks. So 10 weeks, whatever it is. Greater, okay, for you, Scott? Yeah. Greater, at least greater likelihood of an attempt at a fascist takeover, an attempt to annul or, or disregard the elections. Um, and we have to fight every step that leads up to that. And we have to treat the elections in a in a militant way, this is a an issue of democracy. Um, uh, that's it. Yes, greater. <laughs> okay, Rosanna. Well, I'm going to disagree. I don't I don't think it's greater. I don't think it's less either. I think it's about the same. And I think because the people's forces are out in the streets still, you know, there's a lot of great effort to get out the vote by so many organizations, by so many different entities and everything like that. So that uh, I, don't, I don't think it's changed. I don't think it's less, but I don't think it's greater. Uh, there's gonna be attempts, yes. But it, it hasn't, in my opinion, uh, we've been able to at least hold the line, so to speak. What about you, Joe? I'm gonna base mine on what I see happening amongst my friends from my hometown. And what I can gather, they're more active, more engaged. They're right. making Facebook po posts. They're trying to get other people to get involved. So if that's happening at the grassroots, um, I'm gonna say, agree with Rosanna, less. Good. Because the movements are growing stronger. Well, we'll see what the polls look like next week, if you can trust the polls. 
I don't trust them poles as far as I, you can throw them. But I also know they always would say you can't pay attention to the poles until after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. A lot of people aren't paying attention. Mm -hmm. So we'll see, as my mom, uh, may she rest in peace, used to say. We will see. Have a great uh, Friday. Uh, stay physically distant, but socially close. Uh, and we'll see everybody next week. Stay engaged. Right. Make sure you vote. Register. Get your friends to register. Get out on the street. Ballot. Protest safely, huh? Ask for your mail-in ballot. Mail in. Ask for your mail-in oh, ballot. Mail. Demand yep. it. Stay optimistic, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye Joe. Bye, Bye, -bye. Bye buddy.